Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve. And the whole purpose of this video is to talk to people who may be new to this channel. First of all, I want to welcome you to my channel. And if you're here looking for programming with uh, Commodore 64, if you're here to look for a semi language with Commodore 64, sometimes with the Atari, you're in the right place. I want you to know that. So um, also there's a lot of great people here that can answer questions for you in the comments section and just people I have connections with. The whole purpose of this video obviously is to help people who may not know how to get software or your programs basically off of your Commodore 64 to the desktop. Now on this channel what I do a lot in this channel is you'll see me actually using what's called the Vice C64 emulator. It's a built-in Commodore 64 emulator that you can download directly to your Windows desktop, your Macintosh, or even Linux to run directly inside of you know your operating system like Windows 10, Windows 7, whatever version you're using, whether it's you know Mac OS or whatever. And then this will allow you then to basically be able to take programs that are not on your hardware per se, but that are on your desktop or even on GitHub or something you find on the internet to access and download to your computer in what's called a D64 file, a disk image file. And we'll go over that more in the video. So let's get started with that. And I really want to thank all the people who've subscribed to my channel and all those who are out there who are still confused about it. And maybe new people coming to the channel, watch this video. I think it's going to be very helpful for you. Okay, so straight from Google, what you're going to do is just type in Vice C64 emulator. It'll be the first one at the top here. You'll want to click on it. It'll say vice emu sourceforge.net. That's a good way to download it. I don't think there's really any other site that would probably be appropriate. But this is where I downloaded it. And it'll take you right to the vice site. So this is actually it. And then you're going to click on the download link here or the download um, tab. And then it depends on what kind of version you have, whether you have, you know, whatever kind of version you're having here, Windows, Microsoft Windows. And then there's some different stuff here, 64-bit, um, 32-bit. Um, so you just want to go for the most simple one. You don't really want to, and here's for the Mac down here, for Linux, you know, Ms. DOS and whatever. So I would just click on the top one. Usually that's the most updated version. I don't really see anything else in here. There's a manual you can download here too, but I don't really see anything else. You wouldn't really need a 64 version. I just use the top one here. And when you click on it, it'll start downloading here. I'm using um, Firefox, so mine will download here. I must have clicked on there. It's kind of downloading it right now. There it comes. It takes a second to pop it up there. I was trying to minimize the window so you can see this. So if I move this over here. So you can basically download it right here. Just click on OK. It'll pop open a window there. It'll be set in your temp folder. So I just go in here and I just kind of copy it, like right click it, for example, here. And you can just go in here and create a new folder. You can copy it here or whatever. I have mine under the Commodore C64. Well, let's just say you want to copy it directly to your C drive. So just put it on there. And then what you're going to do is you can either right click here and paste, or you can just press Control C. It'll do the same thing. I'm just going to paste it here. So it copies that folder over, and I'm using Windows 10. Getting some junk pulled up there. So now I can minimize this because I'm going to be using my desktop stuff. So what we're going to do here is now we're going to go ahead and we're going to double click it here. Now what it's already done is it's preloaded Vice, so you don't really have to go in and set anything up for initialization. You don't have to install it as a zip file. I just basically downloaded it here. And you just basically click on it, and you're going to be able to run it now. You click on the one that says X64, by the way, and it should load right up. And there you go. Okay, so now that we have Vice loaded up on your screen, the next thing is, um, what do I do with it? How do I use it? I mean, you can just go in here, and you can just send in regular commands and stuff like that. You could just type in regular programs, and it'll set, you know, regular programs. Like, here's a simple loop for you, for example. And you can break out of that with the escape key. Um, there are setups you can do directly into it, but what we have to be first, if we create a file here, we have to be able to save it. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the file menu here. And you'll see it says right here, 
um, attach disk image. Now this is for if you're using a tape, but obviously for a desktop, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be um, attaching it to a disk image. A disk image this is a file that's going to basically recognize it to be able to translate it on your computer so that you can run it inside of Vice. And we're going to um, create. What we're going to do is now I've got my own ones in here. Since I've already created this one, I'm going to go in to the actual Vice folder that we created. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and create a new image here. So we can go down here and create the image. We're going to create a, a file name for it. Um, we'll just say first program. Something very simple. And then down here is where you set the D64 depending on the type of device that you have. You can just leave it to a default of D64. There's really no reason to go in and change any of these unless, of course, any of these would apply to you. And you create the image. And it will show right down there. Now, what you have to do is once you've created the image, you want to select it. So the first time it's selected, and you want to attach it. Now, once you've detached it, it's the same thing as putting a disk in your drive. And now the computer can see that you have a directory you can save to. So if you go in here and you type in load string comma eight, you'll see it says searching for dollar string. And you can see that it's now initialized the D64 to use and save program. So we could go in here now and we could save a program. Let's just make create a simple program. We'll just call it simple program. And then from here we're going to go ahead and just like say create a simple little loop. Make it a little bit fancy there. And then go to 30. Now we have our simple program. We can just say simple. I say, I guess simple is good enough. We don't really have to name anything else. It's a basic file. So you just save it like a regular command. You'd save with the two quotes like you would do. Um, you can put a space in here if you want. It doesn't really matter. And then comma eight, just like you would do on a regular Commodore 64. And you hit the enter key. And then now you're going to go in here and just type in load string comma eight. And you'll see that it now exists once you type in list here. So now your program has been saved properly to device. So anytime you guys get programs on here and you want to save them, that's how you get them in device. So whenever you see mine, you can go directly to GitHub, download them from there. And I'll probably show that here in just a little bit. And then you can actually translate them directly in device. So I just wanted to show you um, other things you can do here is you can go in here and you can copy. And let me demonstrate that here a second. I just opened up a window here to show you. So I just copied it. Now if I go in here and I right click and click paste, you see what it's done is it's replicated what's on my screen. If I scroll up here, you'll see what it's done is it's copied everything that just appeared on this screen here. So it's very precise on what it does. Okay, so we didn't really go through this whole list. Um, we probably don't need to go into a lot of this stuff. Most of this is tape stuff. I don't mess with a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff can be used like when you're doing gaming and you want to freeze cartridges. And But this stuff is interesting right here. If you write in machine language and you hit the monitor here, you can now view a live monitor just by clicking on the monitor. And then you just go up here to window, I'm sorry, to view. You can hit a register window and you can see these are the registers. And this applies to people who are writing in machine language or in the semi language. So if you don't do that, this won't apply to you. Here's a memory window. This will allow you to view all the data that's stored in your computer's memory. I think if you go down here somewhere, you can see the ROM and stuff like that for your computer. You can see right there, there's like says ready break. So that's basically picking up your computer's memory there. And it's just looking at all the memory in your computer and it keeps track of what you're doing directly in the device. And then of course we've got the disassembly window. This is for those who are writing directly in machine language. And this is, you're gonna see this is everything. This is your your entire computer's memory is right here. And this is how the Commodore, Commodore 64 thinks. It's all done in binary and binary. This is basically a semi language here. It's just translated so that the computer can, so that a human can understand it. But really, the computer only sees the zeros and ones, and it translates them into codes that you're seeing on the screen right here that the computer can work with. Basically, that's what is called machine language. And then in here, you can go ahead and you can write direct commands. We probably won't do that because this is not a machine language video. But that's just wanted to show that to you. One second here. Okay, I had to reboot it. It went crazy on me there a second ago. So what I was going to do is I was going to show you a snapshot image. So we'll go back in here. 
and we'll load the simple in, assuming it's still attached here. It should be still attached. Oh, it's not attached. So we need to attach it again. So go to File, and then go to Attach Disk Image and select Drive 8, and just click on it again. You can also run it by double clicking in this window too. But as soon as you attach it, it's already going to attach it. But if you double click here, it attaches it and it runs the program too. It actually it added line zero in there too. That's interesting. Okay, so now that we have this on the screen here, I'll show you what it, this does here. So you've got a snapshot here. You can save a copy of the, the program. If, for example, if you don't want to lose it, and let's just say we'll just erase this, for example, since we don't need this anymore. And let's just say you type in something and you wanted to save a snapshot image. You just go here to save snapshot image. You could save it as a file here. I don't usually use that a lot because I don't really need to store it as a file. What I do is go down here instead and I just um, save quick snapshot image. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to reload this code. So right now it looks like it hasn't done anything, right? But let's just say we go back in here for some reason or we have to reset our program. It crashes or something like that. And we can go to reset, by the way, and reset with a hard or a soft right here. Let's just say whatever reason we had to reset and we lost our program, we're like, oh no, I didn't save it on disk. If you go to snapshot here and you load quick snapshot image, it instantly will bring it back. Okay, so I just went to Google here, and in the address bar here, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to type in www.github.com slash S M O R R O W eight eight five nine, and that will take you directly to where you can download my examples here. So let's just say you're watching the very basic tutorial and you wanted to download one of the latest versions. Um, you can always go down here and you can scroll in this uh, category down here to look for it. The latest version is right here. I didn't name it the same thing. It's actually redefined characters. So if you click on it right here, you'll see the files right here, and this is the file that you want. The D64 files, these are the ones that's going to work directly in Vice. So you just click on it. Um, you can also click on Clone or Download. I just um, basically um, click on it like this, easiest way. And then you'll see a download link here. You just click on Download. It'll pop open a window like that and allow you to save it. We'll just save it right here for now. We don't really need to do anything. It'll save it up here and then we can just look for it. It'll be in the Downloads folder. If you're using Firefox, I just click this little arrow here and it'll pop open like this and you can open it back up. But the easiest way to do is now, it, it should have saved it on here and I don't think I made this large enough where you can see it. It should have basically just saved it. I just go down here to the file or you can go to the windows here and you can look for your file folder. It'll say File Explorer. I'm using Windows 10 there. And you should be able to go right here. And there it is, C64, very basic one. Mine's saying one because I've already downloaded a version before. Yours might just not have a one in front of it, but you just go here and you copy it like this. Now that we've copied it, we can move it over to where we can get it more easily in Vice. So you can just go back to your C drive or wherever you want to create it. I'm just going to stick it back in the same folder not to make this too complicated. And we'll just save it directly in the folder where Vice is here. And you'll see it up here right here after we've saved it right there. So now, if we go into Vice here once more, we go to the file. You can also hit the uh, uh, shortcut, hold the Alt key, press the 8, press the, hold the Alt key down and press the number 8, and it'll still load open that window there for you to attach the disk image. And you'll see it popped right up this time. So here's our original, and then here's our D64 file. So now we have access to all the files that are on my, um, my GitHub there. You just go in here, and you can load them just like before, and it's going to look at that new disk image file that we just um, attached to it. Now you can see they're all right here, and you can easily load in any example. So if you wanted to load in the redefined character set, you can just go load, redefine, it was two. Oh no, no, it's not two, I'm sorry. That's the, well that's the original, but this is the, the demo. If you wanted to do the demo, it's, uh, I think it's that one right there. That's the most recent video I put up for the redefined character set. And now it's loading it. It'll take a second. And you can list it to see it's there. And you can see that it's now loaded directly in the vice. And you was able to download this from the website and get it up and running there. Run it, of course. 
just to see it run and working in Vice. And that's just a little demo I created, but hopefully this uh, was helpful to you in how to get your programs loaded into Vice. So that's the whole purpose of using Vice, to be able to get programs from whether it's on the internet or programs on GitHub or wherever you can get to them or just type them directly in. And that's how you can get them into Vice and you can save them. So now you should be able to get things going on your desktop computer. Now. Much later, when I get the 1541 Ultimate 2, I'm planning to show you how to upload them from your, basically your computer to your desktop. But that's going to be in another session. For now, I just want to make it really simple for people who want to know. And I'm going to cut this video short so I don't make it too much longer for this one. So thanks for watching. I appreciate all your likes, favorites, subscribes. And any questions you have, just throw them down in the comments and we'll get this rolling. Have a good day.